This is what really happens to your body when vitamin B12 is low. In this video, I'll tell you everything about it. What are the risk factors? Which medications can lower vitamin B? Where can you get it? What foods are good sources of vitamin B12? I'll talk about supplementation levels. What's a good vitamin B12 level? Is there any issue if vitamin B12 is high? And what actually happens in your body? What are the signs and symptoms? I've listed nine signs and symptoms that appear when vitamin B12 is low. I'll also tell you about blood tests. Some tests can provide clues to help diagnose this deficiency. So everything about vitamin B12. I've gathered questions you ask in videos and I'll answer them all. I'll start by explaining what vitamin B12 does. I want you to know two functions. The first is in our bone marrow. To produce red blood cells, our body needs vitamin B. In B12 deficiency, bone marrow may struggle to produce these cells. White blood cells and platelets can also be affected. It's important to mention this. Many only talk about red blood cells, but others can suffer too. This is one of its functions. It helps produce blood cells. Another major role is in the central nervous system. Vitamin B12 is crucial for the neuron sheath. For the myelin sheath, essential for neuron myelination. Without it, neuron communication suffers, causing various symptoms. How can you get vitamin B? There are two ways. One is through diet, the other through supplements. In diet, what are the sources? Mainly foods of animal origin. So eggs, fish, seafood, liver, chicken, red meat, and dairy are all sources of vitamin B. Are vegans and those who avoid animal products at risk? Yes, they're at risk for vitamin B12 deficiency. But it's not just them. That's what people usually think. Others too, like those taking metformin or proton pump inhibitors such as omeprazole, isomprazole, pantoprazole, and other meds that affect stomach acid, can increase the risk of B12 deficiency. People over 65 are at risk too, as aging can reduce stomach acid production. Actually, our stomach's parietal cells produce acid crucial for absorbing vitamin B. This doesn't happen in all cases, okay? Everything I'm saying here is a risk factor. For example, metformin. I'm not against metformin. I often prescribe it when treating diabetes. So I prescribe it frequently. I'm not opposed to it. I'm just warning you of a higher deficiency risk. The same goes for those over 65. It's an additional risk. Not everyone will have it. All right? Let's not misunderstand this video. Many think it's all or nothing. No. There's an increased chance. Who else should watch their B12 levels? People with autoimmune diseases like Hashimoto's thyroiditis or Graves' disease, autoimmune hyperthyroidism, even fibromyalgia, lupus. These people risk pernicious anemia or atrophic gastritis. These prevent intrinsic factor production, vital for B12 absorption. So those with autoimmune diseases need screening. They're in the risk group. People who've had surgeries like bariatric must check B12 levels, excessive alcohol consumption. Heavy drinkers can also impair B12 absorption. Doctors must assess various risk factors to identify at-risk individuals. Did you know 15 to 20% of people might be B12 deficient? It's incredibly common. What level indicates a deficiency? We aim for B12 levels between 300 and 900. The gray zone is 200, 300. Some show symptoms in this range. Currently, we consider 300, 900 as the normal range. Even at this 300 level, many people may show symptoms. To aid diagnosis, we use two markers that can indicate B12 deficiency before levels drop further. What are these markers? Methylmalonic acid and homocysteine. If B12 is low, these tests will be high, showing the person needs treatment. It's crucial to check other tests related to blood cell formation, like iron, folic acid, and B. Often, people have B12 deficiency along with other deficiencies. Treating just one deficiency might worsen symptoms. What are the nine signs and symptoms of low B? Number one is forgetfulness. You've seen that vitamin B12 is crucial for our central nervous system. Poor memory can be a sign, and if not caught and treated, it may even lead to dementia. That's really important. It's a reversible cause of dementia. If treated, a person can improve, but if left untreated, it can progress and even result in dementia. Vitamin B12 deficiency is extremely common, yet it's a serious issue that's rarely discussed. So, forgetfulness. What's striking is that this first symptom I mentioned often appears earliest, but is most ignored, even by the person experiencing it. Oh, I'm just forgetful because 
my routine changed or this happened or I'm worried. And so people keep putting off getting diagnosed. It's also worth noting that vitamin B12 deficiency often occurs after stopping consumption of animal products or when you start taking medication that can affect it. This deficiency might appear after three years. Some studies even suggest up to five years later, okay? What do I see in practice? Many people start medication or have bariatric surgery, get tested a month or two later, and show normal levels. But that only reflects your current reserves, not your ongoing status. You need to keep checking periodically, all right? I say this because I work with bariatric surgery patients, and it happens a lot. The patient checks two months later, everything seems fine, they stop following up, then come back for a new evaluation with extremely low levels, many symptoms, and the memory changes I mentioned. The same applies to medications like metformin. If you're taking it, get regular tests to check for this deficiency. And symptom number two is hair loss. For many, this is the most serious symptom. It's what really drives them to seek help. You might forget things or have other issues, but when it comes to hair, that's when most people seek help, right? Vitamin B12 is also crucial for our hair. The third sign is behavioral changes. It increases depression risk. Did you know that? Few do as it affects the central nervous system. This can increase frequency. Check B12 levels as treatment may not work otherwise. It might mask symptoms of an underlying issue needing treatment. The fourth sign is balance issues. Vitamin B12 is crucial for our well-being. So changes in balance. One may feel dizzy, struggle to walk or fall. So B12 levels should be checked. Number five is fatigue, paleness, and breathlessness. This can occur due to anemia. Reduced red blood cells can cause these anemia symptoms. You've seen that vitamin B12 is crucial for producing these cells. There's a key clue in the blood count. When we spot anemia with low hemoglobin and red blood cells, we need to check their size. Vitamin B12 deficiency typically causes what we call megaloblastic anemia. That means large red blood cells, unlike iron deficiency, which leads to small red blood cells. So how do we know this? You know those acronyms in blood tests? There are several of them. Look for one called MCV, which stands for mean corpuscular volume. The normal MCV range is 70 to 100. Vitamin B12 deficiency increases MCV. Many people show up with red cells having an MCV of 110 or 115. That's a big red flag. Sometimes it's even higher. Iron deficiency, on the other hand, can drop it to 60 or 65 or lower. So it's a crucial indicator. With a simple blood count, you can get vital info to guide treatment and save time. Sign number six is reduced physical fitness. You used to be able to climb a flight of stairs. Now you can't anymore. You get tired quickly. You could climb four flights before. Now just one tires you out. Your stamina has changed. It's crucial to note this change in pattern because it may indicate low vitamin B12 and like the previous sign, could be due to fewer red blood cells which oxygenate our blood. Sign number seven is vision problems. Did you know that people with this deficiency are more likely to have various vision issues like decreased visual acuity, reduced peripheral vision, making it harder to see, and even a condition called age-related macular degeneration, or AMD. Check vitamin B12 levels when there are vision changes. Did you notice the woman with altered eyes on the cover? You always ask about the reason for the cover image. So why focus on vitamin B12 deficiency? It can actually cause vision changes too. There are two more images explaining the cover, as you often request. I didn't expect you'd ask about it so much. Oh, that's why the cover looks like that. Another image points to the stomach, showing reduced absorption and acid secretion changes. The stomach and intestines are crucial for vitamin B. The other image shows the brain, highlighting all the changes I mentioned. So that explains the cover. Let's move on to the signs. The eighth one, vitamin B12 deficiency can also affect the tongue. Smooth tongue, taste changes, or macroglossia in large tongue. These can also be due to vitamin B12 issues. The ninth sign of low B12, very common, is numbness, medically termed paresthesia. This includes tingling sensations and reduced sensitivity. Many link this to spine issues or diabetes, as high blood sugar can cause it too. However, vitamin B12 deficiency is a major cause. Sensitivity when lying down, like sheets feeling hot or limb tingling, 
needs B12 testing. Did you know vitamin B12 levels can also be too high? High B12 symptoms include acne, oily skin, stomach pain, nausea, and vomiting. When we see signs of high B12, like with low B12, we need to evaluate. Check if they're taking B12 supplements or meds that boost absorption. This is the main cause. Liver and kidney issues can also raise B12 levels. How do we treat it? Once B12 is low, you need to replenish it. Treatment is usually oral or sublingual. For cases like bariatric surgery, we use intramuscular roots. Dosage varies based on cause, B12 levels, and patient symptoms. It depends on specifics, so I can't give a universal dose here. I just want to warn you to be careful with vitamin B12 supplements. Always use them under medical guidance. You know I don't sell any supplements or medications. On a scale of 0 to 10, how would you rate this video? Do you have any questions? Leave them in the comments. I'd also like to know which city you're from. I'm speaking from Porto Alegre. Let me know which part of the world you're in. Now I'll suggest another video for you to watch. It's about vitamin D. Do you know the signs of low vitamin D? Where can you get it? What are the ideal vitamin D levels? I've already made a video on this. Vitamin D deficiency is very common, so learn more about it. Click here to watch my video explaining vitamin D. Take care. See you next time.